G'day guys, I hope you are well and safe. Today I'm gonna to be sharing with you 30 toddler activities that I did with my daughter when she was two and two and a half. So this is a compilation of those activities. You absolutely have been getting some great inspiration from the other video that I did for one to two year olds. Um, I'll link it here if you haven't seen that one. And this one is all the footage is from when she was two to two and a half. If you're over on Instagram, I recommend following me on Play Activities with Mama, where I share weekday activities that I do with my daughter, who's three now, as well as my son, who's 11 months. All right, let's get into it. The first couple of activities are bookish play. So using books that your child loves and enjoys reading and making an activity out of it. So this first one, her favorite book for a long time was The Little Blue Truck. So I set up a farmyard. I actually borrowed these animals and the barn from the toy library. We have a toy library and I get a lot of toys from there. It just keeps it fresh. So if you've got a toy library in your area, I totally recommend having a look at that. And then I set up a small world for her and me to act out the book. So what I used for grass is I had some green foam. So I just put that down and then set up the barn and the animals. And then we role played out the book. We already had this matchbox car ute. So I used that for the little blue truck. And then we acted out the pages in the book to help bring it to life. And it really helps to build those language skills. And as you can see here, she used the truck to drive over the pages on the book, just like the little blue truck does in the book. Another book we've absolutely loved is Dear Zoo. So with this bookish play, what I used was these memory tiles, which we've had for over a year now. I bought from Kmart. They're an American brand, Anko. And so I put the animals out and then as she flipped through the book, she would grab the elephant and put it on that page. I wrote to the zoo and they sent me an elephant. Can you get the elephant? So this was a matching activity, matching the animal to the page. If you didn't have these tiles, of course, you could use animal figurines. By actually handling the tiles or the figurines, if you use those, it's a great way for hands-on learning for what they're actually reading in that book. The third activity I wanna share with you is a fine motor activity, and it is using a dinosaur and elastic bands. Now I went with the dinosaur because she loves dinosaurs and so it was a child-led activity. I find if I follow the lead of her, then the activities are more engaging for her and then they last longer. And it also increases the enjoyment in her activity. These are meant to be fun, it's fun to play. I have tried with a paper towel roll, but it was too difficult. Needed to get the elastic band so wide to get it over the paper towel. So that's why I went with the dinosaur and we've done it multiple times now with the dinosaur and it works really well. In the future, I'll try the paper towel roll again, but at the moment, like I said, I'm using the figurine and she loves it as well as getting those fine motor skills using her fingers, strengthening up the muscles in her hands, which is important later on. It's important for writing, drawing, and how often do we use our hands? An added bonus of this activity is we discussed the colors of the elastic band. So I've got a rainbow colors here. So it was also a color recognition activity. Number four is a number recognition activity. So I love to use recyclables. Egg cartons feature a lot in my activities. Um, so with this one, what I did was I wrote the numbers on the front of the egg carton. And then with a skewer, as you can see here, I punched the corresponding number in. So one all the way up to six in the number six. At this age, my daughter liked poking the matchsticks in and pulling them out again. And the numbers were there, but it wasn't the heavy focus. These particular matchsticks, I got a thousand of them from Officeworks, but I've also linked some in my Amazon shop if you want to shop online. Every time she picked up one of those matchsticks, she was using her pincer grip, which is important in the future for writing and drawing. While we're here, a couple of other activities we've done with the egg carton is a color matching with paddle pop sticks. So painting the egg carton and then putting that popsicle stick in um, and the same with a pom-pom bush. So, I've done a whole video on three different pom-pom activities that I've done with her. And with this one, all you do is you just paint or color in the egg carton, put a hole in it, and then they push in each pom-pom. Or you can flip the egg carton over and paint where the eggs would be. And then using tweezers or tongs, they can pick up pom-poms and put them in. 
So number five is dot stickers or using dot markers. There are so many free printables online. Here I'm using a butterfly and some free stickers that I got from the library, encouraging kids to read. And she was able to just peel the sticker off and stick it on. But if not, my tip is, my mum hack I suppose you'd say, is to remove the backing first and then it's a lot easier to grab the sticker and stick it on. The reason I've stuck it to the window is I want to get her whole body involved in the activity. So by having it on the window, she's got to use her shoulder muscles, her arm muscles to stick the stickers on. As well as by standing, she's working her core and just using her whole body. The sixth activity is a color matching activity. So using these paddle pop sticks and colored pegs, she just pegged them to each color. Whenever there was an opportunity to count, I would take it. So we counted the pegs as she put them on. This is super fast activity to set up. So just grab some pegs, paddle pops, put it down, and then it's good to go. Because as busy mums, sometimes we need quick activities and this is one of those. In the future, I plan to write a number down the bottom so that she will count out that number of pegs and peg it to the paddle pop stick. And when I'm saying closed pegs, I mean closed pins if you're in America. The next activity is a pom-pom drop. And this is my most popular activity that I've shared on my Instagram account. So what I did was using recyclable, so wrapping paper, toilet paper, glad wrap, cling wrap, baking paper, all those different rolls and painter's tape. We've done this before. Previously, we just used one roll to drop the pom-pom in. Whereas this one, I wanted to advance it a little bit more. So by using the painter's tape, I just did it on the wall because it's safe for paint. But if I wanted it to be a little bit more permanent, then I would have put it on some cardboard and used some cable ties or tape to stick it. This brought enjoyment for a few days before she started pulling it off. As you can see here, I've put the rolls at different angles and even I learned something. With this first one, I have the little toilet paper roll and then I had the long wrapping paper roll and it depended which size pom-pom I used, which would go through both of them. So if I just use little ones, it would just go through the first one and onto the ground and it wouldn't actually go into the basket. But the bigger pom-poms I used, it would go through both and straight down that wrapping paper roll into the basket. I'm sensing you're noticing a bit of a theme here with using recyclables. If I get a box, I keep it. So those Amazon boxes, definitely keep them. So this one, I wanted to do a color matching activity. I have these colored paddle pop sticks. And then what I did was I just stabbed a hole in the box with a knife and then used a Sharpie to color in each color. And I did in the rainbow colors because I do love rainbows. When I was setting up this activity, my daughter was watching me. So she really liked watching me use the marker. So after she had done some color matching, putting the paddle pops in, pulling them out again, she asked if she could use the texture. So I got her some different markers, some cardboard, and she colored in that. And to be absolutely honest, she spent more time coloring in with the marker than what she did doing the color matching activity. But that's okay by me because I want child-led play. The next set of activities I want to share with you are some messy play activities. So I know they're not for everyone. So here's a couple of tips for you. One, do it somewhere where you're not going to be too stressed if it gets messy. Whether you do it outside, in the bathroom, um, or on the kitchen floor. Somewhere where you're going to be less stressed because if you're stressed, they're going to pick up on it. The other big tip is think about the cleanup before you start the activity. So have you got towels to wipe it down? Have you got um, water and soap for them to wash their hands? Think about the cleanup at the start, it'll make it a lot less stressful. The first one I wanna share is muddy animals and then giving them a wash afterwards. So I like to use what I've got in the pantry and these were some leftover icing from her first birthday, would you believe, that I still had. So I just mix this together. If you don't have this, you can make your own kind of dirt, cloud dirt by using three cups of plain flour, one cup of cocoa and half a cup of oil until the, you get the consistency that you want. Now, for my activities like these, I don't encourage her eating them. It is an activity. This is just my preference. So all my activities that I share now, we have a couple of rules. One of them is it stays in the tray or it goes away. And I remind her every single time at the start. And if it does come out of the tray, I'll give her a warning. And if it happens again, then I will remove it because it's important to set boundaries. And now I don't have a problem with it as a three-year-old. She knows it stays in the tray or it goes away. Same with eating, we don't eat it. 
She didn't even try to eat this. She's not someone who actually tries to eat the play activities. When we've done it with jelly before, I used real jelly. So the sugar jelly, because she didn't eat it. She didn't even want to put it anywhere near her mouth. However, with my son, I can tell that I'm going to be using gelatin, no sugar, because he just tries to put everything in his mouth. As an 11 month old, that's part of the learning, but I don't want him to be just eating sugar. Every child is different is probably what I'm saying by that. Even with my two kids, they're very different and how I set up the activities and what I do is different. So first part of this activity was getting the animals all dirty, just using some figurines that we had. And then I set up a bowl here with some dishwashing liquid and a sponge and she cleaned them. Of these two activities, like I said, with my daughter, she enjoyed the washing of the animals more. And I have set up other activities where we just wash the dishes. She's got a play kitchen, and so I'll set up some dishes in there that she can watch. The next messy play activity I wanna share with you is using shaving foam and food dye to do some painting. So I set this one up in the shower. I just used some recyclables. These are little plastic rice cups that you get the rice in that you put in the microwave for 40 seconds. Um, so I used those, sprayed in some shaving foam, added some food dye, mixed it all together, and then just set her up in the shower. Um, what I discovered with her, which I've just mentioned, is she likes to keep her hands clean. So I set up a little container here with just some soapy water so that she could wash her hands whenever she wanted. And then she was happier and she kept playing for longer. Otherwise, she just would have wanted to stop because she couldn't clean her hands. The bonus of this shower is it has a handheld shower head, so it is super easy for cleanup. The next activity is making foam. So to do this, you're going to need some tears-free bubble bath. Trust me on this, it needs to be tears-free if there's even a chance they're going to put their hands in their eyes and some food dye. So what I did was it's a two to one ratio. So I did half a cup of bubble bath and a quarter of a cup of water. And just using a hand mixer, I mix that all together. And as you can see here, it gets a really nice foam. And then I use that same underbed storage container, took it outside, hid some letters in there, and we talked about what the letters were. And for the three of them, we just said their sounds as well. Have you got the letter B? B, B, bear? B, B, B. The next activity is making some taste safe rice. With these activities as part of the setup, I believe that's an activity in itself. So with this one, I got my daughter to help through the whole process. So we used one cup of rice. I recommend a long grain rice. If you use basmati rice, I found in the past that it breaks up. So go the long grain rice. And then I used blue and green because I wanted a turquoise color. And then under a tablespoon of vinegar. Don't use too much or it'll get sticky. So less is more, see how you're going. I put it all in this Ziploc bag, seal it, and then she did some of the squishing and squashing. This activity is great for vocab, squish, squish, squash, squeeze. And I do reuse the bag as well as the baking paper that I put it on. So once all the rice was colored, then I just put it out on a tray. Now I have heard of people baking it in the oven. I must admit, I've never done that. I did read somewhere that it doesn't last as long because it can crack, um, but that's just what I've read. So I just let it dry. It only takes a few hours. Um, and once it's dry to touch, it's good to go. Why sensory play is so important is the more senses that you use, so by using smell, your hands, your sight, the more neural pathways that are created. If you're just listening, then you're just using your auditory sense, so you're just using your hearing, but if you're touching it as well, you're using tactile as well as seeing it. So that's why sensory play is so important. So using an $8 play tray, I got this in the kitchen section at Kmart. I've got two different ones and then I use some scoops. Now these scoops are expensive. So when she was younger, I didn't use these. I just used um, bug catchers from eBay, which were really cheap. And now she's gone on to using these. Um, I will link these below because I do really like them, but don't feel like you need to buy them. You can use funnels from the kitchen. You can use um, cup measures, scoops. Um, here I've used a toilet paper roll as a bit of a funnel and you can even make that into a scoop as well. So this is definitely an activity you can use with items that you've got at home and save the rice. So I've still got that exact same rice a year later. Some of my rice is already over two years old. So toddlers do really love pouring activities and this involves a lot of pouring. And it's very easy to change it for each holiday or season. So you can do a Halloween one like I've done here or an Easter one, a Christmas one. 
um, a green theme, a blue theme. You can really modify it just by changing a couple of things. The next messy one I want to share with you is making foam towers. So using that cheap shaving foam once again, and these noodles that I cut up into two inch blocks, so five centimeters. It's actually really tricky trying to dispense the foam. So I showed her a few times and eventually she actually got it and was so excited. And so she didn't worry about the blocks then. <laughs> she just squirted it onto her hand and then would go and wash them in the wheelbarrow. Like I said, I had some water ready to go so she could clean her hands at any time. And she really loved this activity. This is definitely one we did outside. It can get messy, um, but it is fun. It was a real exciting activity for her. She had a real sense of achievement by the end that she could squirt out that shaving foam. The next activity is making Play-Doh. So I've got this quick recipe that I wanna share with you that I really like doing. It's one cup of plain flour, one tablespoon of oil, two tablespoons of cream of tartar. The reason for the cream of tartar is it's meant to help preserve the Play-Doh as well as it helps with its elasticity. That's what I've read anyway. Um, and half a cup of table salt. So I put the flour, oil, cream of tartar and salt into a bowl and then using the same container, so the same cup measurement that I used for the flour is what I used to put the boiling water in, added in some food dye, added some more boiling water. And here, what I did on this particular day is I just poured the whole cup in. But now a year later, I don't do that. I just pour in a little bit at a time and mix it all together. And I've actually found that I don't use that whole cup of water. But in this case, I just poured the whole lot in and it was really sticky. So I just added some more flour, which actually worked out really well because this Play-Doh is so, so soft. We've still got it now. It's still going strong. If you get your Play-Doh out and it's a little bit dry, sometimes all you need to do is just wet your hands to play with it and that's enough. But my troubleshooting tips are, if it is too sticky, add more flour. If it is too dry, add a little bit more water. It has to be boiling water because it helps dissolve the salt. How I like to store it, I just store it in an airtight container. I've heard of some like to store it in the fridge, some put it in glad wrap and then in an airtight container. We've been getting along just fine in an airtight container, but it may depend where you live, depending on your humidity and things like that. And then just using this alphabet puzzle, we pushed into the Play-Doh. So mum, dad, M, her name, her brother's name. And then I use these matchsticks again to just poke into each letter and we talk about them as we go. So this activity was the activity where my daughter said her name properly for the first time. So it's a special activity to me. Um, I hope you guys have fun with it too. The next activity is making flower soup. So using some of those flowers that just aren't looking as good anymore, like this bouquet here, um, and pulling off the petals, which is a great fine motor activity. Then we put it into this jug, added some food dye. It is amazing how an activity can just be so much more exciting and interesting if you just add a little food dye to the water. Um, I definitely recommend that. Um, and then she did lots and lots of pouring and pouring them into these different bowls. These are Ikea bowls. I really love the brightness. And so we use them a lot in our activities. If it was in summer, I would have frozen some of them as well so that there was some frozen ice petals that she could pour as well. But the next activity is painting. We do a lot of this, but the reason I wanna share this one is because we used an egg carton as the paint palette. So it was super easy cleanup. Um, which is mums, you know, we need that sometimes. I didn't want to spend a lot of time cleaning it all off with water. I, once I was done, we just folded it all up together and it was out. On this particular day, my daughter asked to do painting because we'd just been reading The Blue Goose, who's got The Blue Goose, Red Hen, White Duck, Yellow Chick. So once again, play that's inspired by a book. The next activity is going on a scavenger hunt. So on this particular one, we went looking for leaves. It was autumn, so we had lots of different autumn leaves, sizes, shapes, colors, collected them all together. You could also go on a scavenger hunt for flowers, um, finding different colors. You could easily use a bit of cardboard and just paint some colors on there, put a rubber band around it or a peg, and they can go out in the garden with you and collect things from nature with that associated color. The activity is using those leaves to do DIY trees. So just using some butcher's papers, I drew the trunk, gave her this clay glue, which has like a brush on the end, and she glued it down. 
she absolutely loved this activity. We did this for a few days in a row. If I get an activity that she really enjoys, then we do tend to do it the next day. I don't come up with new activities every single day. Another option would be to use flowers instead of leaves. So those petals that you may have collected just before. Instead, this activity was really good for language. There was a lot of repetition, leaf, glue, paste, stick, just repeating those words helped with her language development. The next activity is doing a DIY salt dough puzzle. So one cup of plain flour, half a cup of salt, half a cup of water and some food dye if you want, mixing that all together. I got my daughter involved with this activity because there's a lot of practical life skills with mixing, combining, kneading. So initially we stirred with a spoon and then we got it out onto the bench and then using this alphabet puzzle that I've mentioned a couple of times, I made a puzzle with the word cat as well as her name with the leftover salt dough we did some little teddies as well if you want to make a hole in them at the time then just use a straw to puncture a hole in the dough before it sets unfortunately when i did her name there was a real rise here so if i did it again i would do a baking tray on top to help keep it flatter i put this in the oven for three hours at 120 degrees celsius or 250 degrees fahrenheit Another painting activity I want to share with you is doing your own canvas. So it was my grandpa's 90th birthday. So I just used some stickers for the nine and the zero and some painter's tape around it and then got her to paint that. And then I just pulled it all off and wrote a little note down the bottom. Next activity is doing some color sorting in a sensory bag so using water and two different colors. I went pink and blue buttons. Make sure to seal up the bag. And I just did two circles and then she moved around the buttons. Next one is making quiet blocks. So using super cheap noodles, I just cut each block to be two inches or five centimeters. And then we made towers. How I set this up as an exciting invitation to play is that I built four towers and she couldn't wait to knock them down. And then we built them up again. Next activity using the exact same blocks, making sure to use the flat side. So not the side that I'd cut. So use one of the ends and some bubble solution and then blowing bubbles. We're up to activity 26 and this is just child led coloring. I know this is simple, but simple is what I'm about. So I just asked her what she wanted to color in and we went on the internet. She said she wanted a chicken, I typed that in. Then she pointed to the rooster and I printed that out. She got a lot of joy because she'd chosen what she was gonna color in. I've done the same for cats and Thomas the tank engine. Um, so I encourage you, ask them what they wanna color in and then print it out. The next activity is a whiteboard scribble. So the reason I'm sharing this is because the first time she did it, she did it for 45 minutes. I was using this whiteboard to just jot down my son's newborn feeds and sleep times. And she'd seen me doing that. So she wanted to do some scribbling on it. Like I said, the first time she just scribbled on it with this whiteboard marker and then we'd wipe it off. And it was a simple activity that I could do, to be honest, when I was recovering from a cesarean. So it was a good one that we could do together. Then she had a little break and then we came back and did another 15 minutes. So I had to share this activity because although it's simple, it was so helpful for me in those early days with the newborn baby. The next activity is using alphabet magnets that you get from the fridge and these mini cupcake baking tray. Um, I just put some of the letters that she knew and some that she didn't in this basket and she would put it on the tray and just talk about them as she did it. Another activity that we did was using these giant pom-poms that I got from Kmart and some out-of-date ice cream cones and pretending to have ice creams. This activity was a color recognition activity because I would ask for a particular color. Can I please have a pink ice cream? And she would go and get that colored ice cream and her dad would get blue. So it was an activity that we could do together. And she loved serving us ice cream. We also had the tongs. So it was a fine motor activity. The next activity is using those food pouch lids and color sorting them. So here I am, I've got these Ikea bowls again that I keep going on about and a scoop and she just color matched each one. The last activity I want to share with you is using these threaded pom-poms that I got from Kmart. I really struggled to find anything that would thread through it. So I ended up having to go with spaghetti. I tried um, pipe cleaners and I tried straws, but they were all too big. So in the end, I put some dough down the bottom and these spaghetti and she threaded them on. If you've stuck around to the end, you're awesome. Thank you so much for supporting my family and happy playing. Bye.